Welcome to the NWR Aussie Resources Conference. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Next up, we have Flynn Gold. The ASX code is FG1. And the newly appointed as Chief Executive Officer, Neil Marston, joins us. He joined them on the 24th of August and has hit the ground running. Uh, they've got a portfolio of uh, exploration projects, both in Tasmania as well as Western Australia. Over to you, Neil. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, good afternoon, Kerry, and thank you for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon to all the, the um, participants in the webinar. Um, so as, as Kerry said, I've uh, recently joined Flynn. Uh, the company has been listed for just over a year now, listed on the ASX in June uh, 2021, after raising $10 million. So um, <clears throat> at the moment, uh, uh, it's uh, very well cashed up. And prior to listing, the company was already doing exploration with seed funds. So it, uh, hit the ground running last year with drilling programs on in uh, Northeast Tasmania. Uh, there's the uh, important yes. disclaimer, which you can read at your leisure. <clears throat> so, um, as I said, the technical team um, spent quite a bit of time before Flynn was listed. Um, their exp exploration strategy was really centered around looking for opportunities uh, particularly um, high-valued opportunities in Tasmania, where a number of our, our management team and board are, uh, are based, um, and also looking at uh, battery metals, uh, uh, both um, in Tasmania and certainly in Western Australia, where lithium and, and nickel are very, very, uh, very much uh, in favour at the moment. Uh, the company has been able to secure a large exploration footprint, and all of that is 100% owned. The Tasmania... <clears throat> Uh, they've got 10 granted exploration licenses there. In Western Australia, there's a bunch of applications uh, which are starting to flow through. Up in the Pilbara, we've got tenements there which are starting to get granted close to gold and lithium uh, uh, deposits. And also in the Yilgarn, there's, um, there's ground which we've acquired, and I'll talk about a bit, bit later about, um, which is uh, on, the, on the doorstep of uh, world-class lithium and uh, nickel deposits. So... Um, <clears throat> The company's uh, snapshot, as you can imagine, for a company which has only been listed for a year, um, it's only got 95 million shares on issue. Cash at the bank, uh, as at the end of June, was a healthy $5.4 million. So most of the money uh, that's been raised since the IPO has gone very much into the ground. A lot of ex exploration efforts has been uh, put into uh, drilling on our uh, priority targets there in Tasmania. Okay, the board and management, as you can see, we've got uh, Clive Duncan, who's uh, spent most of his career working for Bunnings. Um, Sam Garrett, he's a geologist, based uh, or grew up in Tasmania, so he knows uh, our Northeast Tasmanian and uh, Western Tasmanian assets very well. Uh, Sam's claim to fame is uh, uh, being involved with the, uh, or credited with the discovery of the Haveron. Uh, deposit, which is um, uh, very much front and centre um, at the moment in Western Australia. And John Ford, he's um, a lawyer and uh, a geologist. John's um, involved with the Lao Resources uh, Fund, uh, which are uh, investors in Flynn Gold. Uh, on the exploration team, uh, Sean Westbrook, he's also a Tasmanian geologist and brings a wealth of experience uh, to the company. <clears throat> So because of our uh, management team's um, um, Tasmanian focus, um, uh, they've certainly been looking at the opportunities uh, to, to um, secure ground, um, and particularly with the recent uh, um, success in exploration in Victoria over the last few years, the Fosterville discovery uh, has certainly reignited exploration in Tasmania. And if you look at this table here, you can see that you know, in the last financial year, ended uh, June 21, there was over $180 million worth of exploration spent in Victoria, whilst uh, Northeast Tasmania had a mere 14 million. So whilst um, uh, the amount of exploration focus has been up on the mainland, um, there is a lot of synergies between Tasmania and Victoria. Basically, the geology is the same. It's that Northeast Tasmania is an extension of the uh, West Lachlan uh, origin and the rocks are a very similar age. So uh, geologically speaking, it's an extension from uh, Victoria. And there's um, in Tasmania itself, the biggest gold mine there 
historically has been the Beaconsfield uh, mine, which has produced about 2,000 ounces of gold. So we think there's an ex excellent opportunity to, uh, to acquire uh, or to make discoveries of uh, high-grade gold in uh, northeast Tasmania, similar to what's uh, occurring in Victoria. Um, the, uh, the company basically has been a first mover um, because of uh, Sam and Sean's uh, connections with the area. They've uh, identified these exploration targets. Uh, most, of, uh, most of these targets they've known about for a long time from their earlier times working in uh, Tasmania. And they've basically been able to um, build a portfolio of ground there. Um, and two of the targets, which uh, we think could uh, turn out to be um, significant gold systems are at Golden Ridge and, and Portland. Now, Golden Ridge, that's a, um, what they call a intrusive related gold system. Uh, we've basically got a granite uh, granite diorite contact with the sediments. And that's very similar to the King of the Hills deposit in Western Australia. Uh, <clears throat> there's over eight kilometers of strike length, which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, surprisingly, since the old timers have uh, sort of stopped mining there back in the um, early 1900s, there's been very limited exploration in the area. Since the company has been listed, however, we've undertaken diamond drilling at uh, the Brilliant Prospect, and also we're drilling at Trafalgar right now. And we, we feel from the results we've seen to date that this could uh, potentially be a camp scale system. At Portland, um, we think that uh, high grade Fosterville lookalike. There's over 30 kilometers of uh, exploration targets there, which look very similar to most of the mineralization in, um, in Victoria where gold, these gold systems occur. Once again, very limited exploration. We've done some drilling back in 2020 and <clears throat> later, uh, a later program um, was completed earlier this year, which we're still waiting on results. Uh, but once again, it needs uh, a lot of exploration effort, but uh, we think it's certainly got the scale to host significant mineralization. In the time I've got, uh, Kerry, I'm just gonna talk about uh, Golden Ridge and what we're doing right now at Golden Bridge. And if you have a look at, uh, uh, the map on the uh, left-hand side here, you can see basically um, what I was talking about. The pink shows the uh, granite diorite intrusion. Um, that's pushed up uh, through the sediments uh, historically, and then it's weathered away. So you basically get in this area here, a big depression, um, which is um, with the ridge line running, running around the edge of it, which is uh, where all the historical mine workings are. Uh, from Kensington here on the uh, western side, right around to double, ed, double event. It's about eight kilometres of, uh, of the contact, which we've identified through looking at the workings, uh, so soil and rock chip sampling. Uh, surprisingly, the only drilling has been undertaken in two locations, here at Brilliant and also at Trafalgar. Billiton uh, did the Brilliant drilling and a company called Tamar Gold drilled at Trafalgar in uh, 2013. <clears throat> So at Brilliant, we've completed two phases of uh, diamond drilling and assays on, uh, on the later holes is pending. Um, and in uh, Trevalga, we're currently drilling uh, phase one diamond holes. We've actually decided to extend that program because the first hole we drill, which was uh, hole uh, TFDD002, uh, it has in intersected some uh, exciting uh, zones of mineralization um, in that first hole. Uh, concurrent with that, we've also been doing our first RC drilling program at Kensington, Blinding, and this link zone through here. Uh, th that program is just about completed and uh, we'll, uh, we'll be getting assay results coming through the system uh, from the laboratories uh, going forward. We've also done region regional exploration um, and uh, geophysics, which are all supporting and improving our understanding of the area. And basically, um, as I said, our view is that uh, the size of this system with gold mineralization identified along that eight kilometers, it could uh, develop into quite a substantial gold system. So uh, just talking about Trafalgar, um, the first or the earlier hole drilled by um, Tamar Gold was this hole one here, drilling under these line of historical workings. And um, that, that drilling uh, back in 2013 hit a, um, close to the bottom of the hole, they hit five metres at 12.26 uh, grams per tonne gold. So that was what encouraged um, the team here at, uh, at Flynn to uh, have another uh, uh, look at this and put a hole in. So the first hole we drilled was uh, 
DD002. The plan is to drill um, three or four holes, uh, maybe more based on uh, our understanding of how things are developing. Um, so hole two was designed to test under hole one or above, uh, above hole one where that uh, mineralization had been intersected and also to test the, um, the granodiorite sedimentary contact. Um, and we hit uh, actually hit mineralization a lot higher up than we um, originally expected, which was very encouraging. And we've got uh, uh, additional results to come out of that hole um, in, the, in the coming uh, weeks. So hole uh, three, uh, after completing hole two and a wedge off that hole, we've moved to hole three and, and that hole is drilling back in the other direction. Once again, to try and contact these multiple uh, vein sets, which we've, um, we're looking at. And, um, and then uh, additional holes from that will either be drilled from that location or from other locations we've identified on site. So there was four quartz veins intersected in hole uh, TF double uh, DDO2. As you can see, this is the drill trace of the original hole here, hole one and hole two. So we were expecting to hit some mineralization in this area here, which we have, which has been very encouraging, but the first zone we intersected here at 160 meters was 5.4 meters at 10.63 grams per tonne, including um, a highest uh, interval of 0.4 of a meter at 52.2 grams per tonne. You can see some of these uh, um, photo, this photo here, there's, um, gives you an idea of the mineralization we're talking about and there's visible gold recorded in that, um, in that uh, fault zone. We're also been seeing uh, visible gold in all these other vein sets. So hole three has been drilled basically off this section, but drilling back into this direction here uh, to try and intersect these vein sets through here in particular. So uh, this, uh, this program is ongoing. Uh, we look forward to providing a lot more news about uh, uh, results in this area as we go forward. Um, so yeah, to date, it's been a very encouraging project and we're looking forward to reporting on that. I'll now talk about our Western Tasmanian assets, which um, previous plans to explore in this area have been sort of delayed by, um, certainly a drilling program was delayed uh, earlier uh, in the program due to weather uh, and uh, access to the site. But um, so over on the West coast of Tasmania, a place called Henty uh, Zinc Project, we've got two exploration licenses, which cover about 130 square Ks. And it really is sitting in a bit of a golden triangle. You've got uh, some major mines in the area. You've got uh, Rosebury, uh, Renison Tin, Mount Lyle, um, all within 20 to 30 kilometres of where we are. There's also the Henty Gold Mine and uh, exploration and uh, mining is also happening over at uh, Avebury um, Nickel uh, Deposit. Busy area. Uh, it's, a, it's an amazing area. Well, I was there the other day and I was so impressed with uh, this project. Um, we think it's a, a very, very exciting project. There's multiple targets uh, been identified from previous work and studies that uh, have been commissioned. And, and with Avebury, uh, sorry, with Rosebury, uh, uh, just about 30 or 40 kilometres by road away from our area, uh, they're producing a zinc lead concentrate. So we think if we find anything which is amenable to going through a Rosebury plant, that would be the obvious solution to try and achieve without building a plant. So uh, just before the company listed, CSA Global was commissioned by um, management to do a study on Henty. Um, basically, they identified two types of mineralization. Uh, the northern area is uh, what you call SCARN or carbonate replacement type uh, mineralization associated with, uh, there's a uh, Heemskirk uh, granites in this area here, and then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Pine Hill granites in this area here. But down on this southern one, where most of the uh, exploration work has been done to date, it's more an Irish type lead zinc mineralization model that's been favored. And there's potential for um, identifying uh, substantial deposits with good grades, particularly in this area here. Nonetheless, it, nonetheless exploration in this area has been very, very uh, limited to date. Um, we've had some big players exploring in the area, um, Amico, uh, CRA Exploration and Naranda have all done a lot of work in the area, uh, but a lot of it's been piecemeal and it hasn't been followed up because of various um, corporate reasons. Um, so really we've got um, uh, 16 uh, targets identified from uh, CSA Global and most of those have not had a lot of drilling on them. 
the most advanced uh, target is an area called Greve siding, which is in this um, polygon here, uh, where um, I'll talk about some of the results uh, in a moment, but there's certainly an excellent target there for sulphide mineralization at the at um, uh, at Greve siding. Then we've got Myrtle um, and South Greaves, where some uh, very good uh, drill intercepts have been identified uh, from shallow drilling. Uh, we're generally talking a lot of the drilling only was uh, down to about 20 metres um, in these areas. And then all these other targets warrant uh, evaluation to a greater or lesser extent. Uh, Sorry, Neil, did you say that they'd only drilled to 20 metres in the past? In a lot of those areas, yes. Just right. shallow air core drilling, um, trying to sort of a, pick up mineralization. So we see that's a great opportunity because there's been lots of holes that have ended in uh, a couple of meters of uh, zinc uh, mineralization. So if I just show you the next slide, this will give you an idea. These are sort of holes that we're talking about. Um, okay. Like this hole here, that ended at two meters at six uh, six percent nickel in this uh, siderite zone. So this is just a section through Greaves, uh, Greaves siding. And as I said, it's our advanced, it's the most advanced resource target over at Henty. And some of those uh, results from earlier drilling are quite impressive. Uh, you look at ZG, ZG107, they intersected 13 metres at 11.2. This is uh, ZG107 here. So 13.2 13 metres at 11.5% zinc in this, uh, what we call the basal siderite zone. And then deeper down, they hit 8.3 metres at 13.9% zinc plus lead, 8.5%. And there's probably some silver in that as well. So this is what uh, is in what we call the silty transitional zone, which is these two units here. Um, and this is more sulphide mineralization Up in this, uh, this siderite zone, it's a more complex mineral. Um, and therefore, we need to do a lot more met metallurgical test work on these samples up here. But to have uh, an interval like this uh, on this section drilled and it hasn't been tested below it to date is uh, pretty impressive. In 2018, um, the company put in some holes before it listed, all the guys who were uh, running uh, Kingfisher Exploration before it was acquired. Um, and they uh, intersected some similar, similar mineralization in the siderite zone and also down here in the bottom of the, uh, the uh, silty transition zone. Um, so uh, yeah, we think it's uh, what what's happening here is in this transitional zone here, um, we're getting uh, more lead coming to the system. The uh, the zinc gra grades may have dropped off a little bit, but the lead's coming up. Plus, you're getting yes. silver. So um, so we think um, um, whilst there hasn't been any jork resources put out to date because of some of the metallurgical issues we're uh, trying to resolve. Uh, we think there's uh, exciting potential, not only at Reeves siding, but also these other projects, which I mentioned earlier. And our plan is to get over there this summer when things are dry and, uh, or drier, and there's never dry in Western Tasmania, um, and, um, and do some drilling there. And, uh, and um, so we'll talk to, we'll advise the market as soon as we've fi finalised the plans and got approvals to do that work. Um, finally, I'll just talk about Western Australia. And one of the reasons that, uh, the company's hired myself, uh, a Perth boy, as uh, CEO of the company. Is uh, uh, we've got a big package of ground in Western Australia, and I'm very familiar with exploring uh, for whatever in Western Australia. So um, the company's been quietly acquiring these uh, projects over the last 12 to 18 months. We've got ground up in the Pilbara at Mount Dove and Yarra, Yarry, sorry, and then down in the Yilgarn, we've got uh, big holdings uh, at what we call the Koolianobbing and Forestonia projects. Over 1,200 square k's of ground, um, and we think these locations are quite strategic. Most of the tenements haven't been granted yet, but recently um, we just had uh, the Yarry tenements granted in the last couple of days, so we're going to uh, start doing some work over there. But um, the two, only two granted tenements we held before that were over here at Mount Dove. Mount Dove's very close to the Hemi gold deposit, which uh, De Grey are feverishly adding more and more ounces to. <laughs> and then we've got um, Pilbara Minerals, Willing, uh, Pillingrua and um, Minerals' uh, JV at Wajina, uh, not far away as well. So it's uh, the right address to be exploring for uh, gold and uh, lithium deposits. <laughs> Uh, we've done a little bit of work at uh, Mount Dove uh, on the grounded tenements. 
Uh, as I said, it's uh, very close to Hemi. It's only about 11 k's away from the Hemi deposit. Um, there's a bit of transported cover over lots of this area. So um, the geology is still very much um, open for, uh, for interpretation. Um, and certainly that's one of the reasons it hasn't been explored in any great detail. Um, Keros have been do, doing some exploration to the south of us and have uh, had sniffs of gold and, uh, and lithium, which is encouraging. So we've gone in there over the last uh, a few months, we've done a soil sampling program that was completed. Over 500 samples have been gathered and, and uh, those results are pending. Uh, we should have uh, those results pretty imminently and be able to report those to the market in the coming weeks. <clears throat> Down in the, um, uh, to the south, as I said, we've got uh, Forestania and uh, Kuhianobi. Um, there's basically a greenstone belt runs all the way up through um, what they call Forestania nickel deposits, which are held by uh, Independence Group, um, Mount Holland, all the way up through Southern Cross, Marvel Lock, and then up through the iron ore deposits of Kuyanobing and beyond. So it's a really, really exciting area. There's a parallel greenstone belt, which runs up through here, through Maggie Hayes. And we've acquired, we've managed to acquire tenements along that greenstone belt. And these tenements are adjacent to, to uh, Mount Holland, which is a world-class lithium deposit. West Farmers is uh, building a plant there at the moment, and that'll be a major operation over the coming years. It's uh, almost 100 million, 190 million tonnes at 1.5% nickel, so it's world-class. Um, and so we've got tenements which are just on the fringes of the granites, greenstone belt. Um, once again, the geology in those areas is not very well understood. Uh, there's lots of sort of transported uh, cover in those areas. So um, to have ground, which is literally on the doorstep of Mount Holland, um, is very encouraging. And as these tenements get granted over the next few months, we'll go out and do a whole lot of exploration work in that area. Um, and as I said, one of the, uh, my primary roles here in, uh, in Western Australia is to get the WA exploration side cranked up over the coming months. Um, <clears throat> bit of a news flow there. You can see we're gonna have lots of drilling results coming out on Trafalgar progressively. Also, uh, as I said, Mount Dove won't be too far away. Portland, uh, Golden Ridge drilling results. Uh, we'll start a, a updating the market about what we're doing on these lithium and gold projects in WA. And hopefully early in the new year, we'll be able to tell the market we've started drilling at Henty. Um, and then later on, we'll be informing the market um, of what we're doing as follow-up work on these other um, good gold targets in, in, um, at the Golden Ridge. So a lot of news flow coming forward. In summary, um, why should people invest in uh, Trafal uh, in Flynn Gold? Um, certainly, Trafalgar is uh, one of the reasons. It's part of the pipeline of high-grade gold deposits. We think we've uh, got the potential of having in uh, northeast Tasmania. Golden Ridge is showing excellent potential from the work we're doing at the moment. Uh, Henty Project, um, I'm very excited about the potential of that area, and, and it'd be great to uh, get stuck into that and uh, find some uh, high-grade lead zinc mineralisation. We are out of time, Neil, so <laughs> let's wrap it up quickly. <laughs> yep, and of course, Western Australia, best place in the world to be exploring for some people. Um, board and management, very well uh, credentialed, and we've got money in the bank, which is very important at this time in the cycle. Thank and you. they've got a guy over there in Western Australia making sure that those new Western Australian projects get up and running. Neil Marston, new CEO for Flynn Gold. Lots of news flow to come. Make sure you check them out, the ASX code at FG1. Thanks for joining us at the NWR Aussie Resources Conference.